Greetings, Gamma fans! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Further to this, welcome one and all to another edition of Isn't It Time? Following on from our last episode where we looked at Planet Hulk, this edition of Isn't It Time takes a long overdue second look at the misunderstood movie about the misunderstood monster. Of course, I'm talking about Ang Lee's Hulk. Released in 2003, Hulk tells the story of Bruce Banner, who of course becomes the titular avatar of violent Viridian vengeance. Panned by some, and coolly received on its release, is this movie truly just so much noise and anger, or could it be an emerald in the rough? Well, let's find out. So take your nanomeds and try not to get angry, because this is Ang Lee's Hulk. Let me tell you the sad, sad story of David Banner. He experimented on himself to try and imitate the regeneration of starfish. But when his wife Edith announces her pregnancy, he wonders what has been passed on. And so, Bruce was born, and lived a relatively normal life. That is, until one fateful day, when this little family is torn apart. But I'll keep that secret a little while longer. Years later, and the adult Bruce Krenzler... Yes, Krenzler, not Banner. You see, Bruce was adopted into the Krenzler family after... After the fateful day that changed his life forever. But anyway, Dr. Krenzler... Begins another day at his science lab. And we're introduced to Betty Ross, Bruce's colleague. Today, the experiment is to test their new medical nanobots. Until the test subject explodes. But hey. The next day, Betty runs into an old friend. Glenn Talbot, ladies and gentlemen. The most punchable person in the movie. Josh Lucas just really gives off that nasty vibe with this one. We then meet General Thunderbolt Ross and a scraggly yet plot important janitor. No, no, bet, 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 Betty, Betty, no, no, don't ask, yeah, don't ask. You don't want to know. Bruce heads home for the night, and the mysterious janitor takes the discarded strand of Bruce's hair. Oh boy, scientists get the creepiest stalkers. But this man is no mere janitor. Talbot tries again to persuade them to sell up, but the answer is still the same. And on with the experiments. But an electrical fault leads to a misfire. Bruce steps in to save Dr. Harper and gets a Gamma Nanomed cocktail. But of course, Bruce survives. But an after hours visitor reveals a terrible truth. Your name is not Krenzler. Ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to reintroduce you to Dr. David Banner. Naturally, Bruce needs to investigate, but it's all too much, too fast, and he snaps. Bruce seems none the worse for wear for the previous night's endeavours. And then, General Ross turns up to complicate matters. And Betty is unceremoniously cut off from our hero. Betty goes off to David's laboratory home. David Banner has been continuing his experiments, and now he's going to send his latest creations after Betty. And Talbot would like a word. Talbot's seething that he's left out of a juicy piece of biotech, and he'll have it out of Bruce's hide. But that's no longer such a good idea. Cue the first real fight scene as Hulk comes to the rescue of Betty. Which we're skipping, because dark. So dark. Seriously, you can barely see what's going on. Betty hands Bruce to the military. Bruce is taken to Ross's desert underground base, to be kept calm and investigated, in hope of a cure. David wants to harness the changes in himself, and he sneaks into the ruined lab. Now... 
I would use this space to tell you about Crusher Creel, the original Absorbing Man, but I haven't really done my research. Um, that is the what my former self meant to say is that we're only mentioning Absorbing Man because that's what David's new powers most resemble. And if you really care about it, you can look it up for yourself. It is the 21st century, people. It's not hard. Back at the base, Bruce and Becky take a trip down memory lane. Yes, before that fateful day, the Banners used to live on this very same base. That was why David was working on regeneration. It was a military contract. Talbot wants to profit from David's work. And a surprising visitor has a sad tale to tell. So what actually happened that day? Well, David was curious what had been passed on to Bruce from his experiments. But when he discovered that he may have created a monster, he sought to make a cure. But without results, the regeneration project was shut down. And David had only one option left. Kill young Bruce before he became a monster. Naturally, this is crazy, and Edith tried to talk him out of it. And it was a mother's love that saved Bruce, even though it cost Edith her life. Back at the base, you can't keep a good Hulk down. But Talbot's greed and pride fatally backfire on him. Literally. For there was nothing in the life of Glen Talbot that so became him, as did the leaving of it. Rod in Hades, Mother Crusher. General Ross shows our hero the door, and the army take their shots. But there's only one way to stop the Hulk. Let's just give him a chance to calm down. Though it does help to have Betty in sight as well. And that's it, isn't it? Well, not quite. We must still bring to a close the sad, sad story of David Banner. Father and son are reunited, but a happy reunion this is not. In the shadow of a deadly device, David thought to see the Hulk, his real son, one last time. But when Bruce is uncooperative, David decides to test the army's deadly device. The Hulk leaps from captivity with father in pursuit. David Banner drinks of his son's incredible power, but he can't handle it. But shock! Bruce is alive! So then, is it time to give Ang Lee's Hulk another chance? This isn't your average Guns and Glory, Fists and Fury kind of comic book movie. This is a thoughtful piece much as it can be, an action movie not for the fate of the world, but for the fate of a man, Bruce Banner. And yes, there are pacing issues, and action scenes are shot in darkness, but these don't ruin the film. The comic book panelled cinematography is genius. The story is intensely personal, and the performances are achingly real. If you're looking for your fix of action, look elsewhere, but if you crave a truly cerebral comic book movie, then yes. It is time you gave Ang Lee's Hulk another chance. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks.